So, okay, thanks for jumping on the call tonight, guys. Um, we have Carolyn Marone, who is a two-star diamond coach, and she has um, been a coach for about 15 months, was able to quit her job, um, and um, actually, um, dropped out of grad school to be able to do this and um we say kudos to her because she's rocking it um she's a success club 10 all-star she's had success club 10 ever since um she signed up as a coach she's really awesome at um signing on new coaches she also is really good at getting her coaches to hit emerald so tonight she's going to talk about her onboarding process how she gets coaches to emerald and this is going to be good for you as a new coach or if you're a leader trying to do the same thing um so either way there's going to be lots of good nuggets from her i'm so sorry I made you guys wait today. I, I really, really appreciate you for understanding. Um, so go. I'm going to go ahead and mute everybody. Um, Carolyn, unmute yourself, and then we'll have questions at the end. Carolyn, um, I do have the hour long, but we have kind of been on for 10 minutes. So you've got 50 minutes. <laughs> so, all right. Take it away. All right. Hey, guys. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you for having me on your call. It's an honor to be on this call for with your team because you're super successful, and it's just really cool that you even asked me to be here. But um, like April said, I, I'm here to talk about onboarding, and it's just something that I've kind of started getting into the groove with. And I know when I signed up as a coach, like, my coach is no longer a coach, so I never was really officially onboarded. So for the longest time, I had no idea what that even meant. And people are talking about onboarding. I'm like, what the, what the heck does that even mean? What is onboarding? Like, is that like you're going on a trip? Like, I don't know what that means. So basically what I did, I had to kind of look into ways to onboard coaches. I studied all the top coaches and kind of picked and choose different things from what they did. And kind of came up with my own type of onboarding system. So basically what I do when people are interested in coaching, that's the like kind of where I kind of start my onboarding before they're even a coach. I start talking to them and I do it on a video call. And I used to do a lot of talking to coaches um, on like a, like a Facebook messenger. And what I found was that you really don't get to know that person well and you don't really get a feel for who they are. So I started to automatically switch to a video call or like if they don't have this, I do FaceTime, but I always try to actually communicate with the person face to face. So once they get on a call with me, I kind of talk to them about like, basically kind of talk to them about their why and stuff like that and figure out how health and fitness has incorporated into their life, why they are interested in this. And then once, so I kind of start kind of getting them to talk about their why before they're even a coach. So I don't know if that has to do with part of it, but I guess I can kind of consider that part of my onboarding. So then once they sign on as a coach, I have a system that I do for all the new coaches and my coaches on my team are starting to do this as well. So when a coach signs up, they I send them a new coach welcome email, and in that email, they're, I send the email to them whether or not they're a working coach. So if they're a discount coach, I still send them the email because you never know, like maybe from them being in the team page, I actually have a woman who contacted me last week, and she's like, she was a discount coach, she was a challenger turned discount coach, and then now she really wants to work the business. So she has all the tools already and knows to schedule a call with me because she has that email. So, and I'm sorry, I'm like out of breath. I've been doing calls since three o'clock today, like nonstop. So I'm running on two Shakeologies today. Um, but she, um, so once I have the, I send them the email and in the email, there's a video that I created and I basically explain three different types of coaches. So you can be a discount coach. You could be a work, like a hobby coach where you're kind of like in the middle. You might be working a full-time job and doing this on the side. Or you can be a business building coach, like a full-time coach where that's all that you do. But I kind of explain that it's okay if you start off like a discount coach. I mean, I was a discount coach and now I'm here talking on somebody else's team call. So that says something about discount coaches, I guess. Like don't discount them. But um so it, after that video, I have them schedule their getting started right call. And I have my link to schedule that in the email. And I know April does this as well. She has a link in there for you guys to schedule your getting started right call. So what I can say is like, 
copy what April does for emails. Like definitely if you're a new coach and you're going to send out something to your new coaches, don't use exactly what she does because it's, that's what April does, but you want to kind of take the formatting of it and make it your own so that you have an email that you can send out to your coaches and then they can have an email that they can kind of take and modify a little bit and send it out to their coaches. So you want it to be something that can be duplicated over time. So after they watch the video um, and they schedule their call, the first thing that I do when I get on the call with them is ask them, okay, so you watch the video, what type of coach is it that you would like to be? But before I even, um, like, so I know that they saw the email if they scheduled the call. So if they don't schedule a call, I know that they either A, didn't open the email and look at it, or maybe it went to spam. So I'll, I do check once. I say, have you had a chance to look at the email? But that's it. Like, I don't chase people anymore. I used to. But once I ask them once, if they say they haven't had a chance to look at it, then I know, like, okay, well, when you get, when you get a chance, look at it. And then when they see it, they can schedule the call. But I'm not going to be like, hey, schedule a call with me. Hey, schedule a call with me. Like, oh, did you schedule a call yet? Because that's not my job to do that. And it took me a while to realize that, but I'm happy that I know that now. So that's just something um, to, to take away from that too. Like don't chase people. If they really want it, they'll schedule a call with you or they'll schedule a time to talk to you about it. So after the first email is sent out and we do the getting started right call, a lot of the stuff that I talk about on the call, it's basically just after I talk to them about what kind of coach they want to be, I can kind of figure out which direction to push them in. So if they, I mean, if they're going to be a discount coach, they're not going to schedule a call with you. So that you don't have to worry about a discount coach scheduling a call with you because they're, they're not going to want to build a business. So if they say they want to be like a hobby coach, I still kind of push them to make success club five a non-negotiable because most of the time when they say they want to be a hobby coach, they want to do that for right now. That doesn't mean they always want to be a hobby coach because who always wants to be a hobby coach? I mean, really. Like, once you get into it and you see the potential, they're going to want to go for to be a business building coach. So just because they say right now it's part-time, don't always consider that person like, okay, well, they're only going to be part-time, so they don't have to hit success club every month and they don't have to try to get Emerald. Like, they don't have to do that because they only want to do it part-time. Like, no, the goals are still kind of the same for them. But maybe instead of telling them if they want to build fast, if they tell me, I want to be a business building coach, I want to build fast. So instead of saying, reach out to three to five people, I tell them, okay, reach out to like maybe seven to eight people or eight to 10 people instead of three to five. And if you want to just kind of go at like a, a good number is three to five, but if you want to build faster, like you told me you want to, then reach out to eight to 10. So I give them the minimum, but I tell them if they want to build, like they said, this is what you need to do. So then I also talk about um, just the three vitals. Like you need to be reaching out to people. You need to be posting on Facebook. I explain to them, like I'm sure you guys all know this, like how to post and how it's kind of like goes hand in hand. You can't just post and you can't just reach out to people. It's something that kind of goes together. Because if you're posting and you're not reaching out to people, then nobody's going to have the balls to talk to you because you haven't talked to them. And if you're reaching out to people and you're not posting, nobody's going to bring it up because they're not going to see that you're posting about it. So it's definitely something that needs to go hand in hand. And then I um, talk about personal development and what I do at the end of the call, I send them an email that has a recording of the call. So I record the video calls and that's why I like to get them on video so that I can send that recording to them and then they have it to refer back to if they maybe forgot something or they wanna go listen to it again. But it also serves as a tool that they can use when they sign up a coach. They can send that call to their coach if they are not comfortable yet doing the call themselves. So it serves as a lot of different things. It's good to remind them of things. It's good to kind of help them train their coaches. And it's just good to have because then they can see like what I, like how I talk to people and how I do the call without me having to get on the call with every single coach who I sign up. 
because I do do that. Like when I have a coach and they have a new coach and they want to do a three way getting started right call. I do those, but sometimes I'm not available to do that every single time somebody signs up a new coach because I mean, not every coach, I mean the first two and then that's it. But if there's a lot of people, it's like, I can't do it for everybody. So they have that call and they can use that to um, like help their coaches too. Um, so then after the, well, actually on the getting started right call too, I also talk about like open shop, which is something I kind of got from uh, Melanie Mitro. That's what she calls it. So she's successful. So that's what I'm going to do. And she, um, she has her coaches like announced that they're a coach. And I made a little video that kind of explains what it means to open shop. And basically, it's like the grand opening of a restaurant. You want to tell people what you're doing, why you're doing it, um, what you can do for them. And then you want to invite them to something. So whether it's a challenge group or a clean eating group or whatever that's going on, you kind of want to invite them, sorry, invite them to join you in your, in, on your journey. So I... In the email that I send them after the first call, I include the recording of the call. I include the, an audio file of You Are a Badass, so there's no excuse why they're not doing personal development because I'm giving it to them. And then I also include um, the video that talks about how to open shop so that they can watch it. And then I have them send me what they wrote so we can go over it and post it at like a high traffic time. So... I don't do the next call until what has been done well that we talked about the first call. So on the first call, I also ask them, like, can I hold you accountable to these tasks? And that kind of takes the relationship to like, this is serious. Like, I'm not going to get on a call with you next week until I see that you have open shop, until you have announced that you are a coach and that you are doing these things consistently. So, I mean, this happened to me this week. I had a girl, she was scheduled for Monday, and I said, I, I didn't remember seeing her open shop post, so I messaged her, and I was like, um, did you, how'd the open shop go? Did you, like, forget to tag me in it or something? I didn't see it. And she said, oh, I never, I didn't get to do it yet. So I was like, okay, well, I can't really have your next call with you until you do that, because there's nothing really for us to talk about because if you're not telling people you're a coach, we're not going to have people who are reaching out to you and I'm not going to be able to tell you how to follow up with them. So what she did was she was okay. I'll, I'll announce that I'm a coach. She made the post posted it on Monday and we had our call today. So that's another thing too. You don't want to just keep wasting your time with people who aren't going to put the effort in and expect you to like, because how many times can you tell somebody, okay, you need to reach out to people. You need to post on Facebook and you need to do your personal development. Okay, I'll talk to you next week. And then they come back next week and you have to tell them the same thing. It's not going anywhere. You're just doing the same thing over and over again. So you kind of want to make sure that you can hold them accountable to what you asked them to do the week before. And then when they come back, I usually ask them to rate their performance because I feel like self-reflection is very important. And I know, like, if I'm looking at them, I think they're doing great. Like, they might not think they're doing so well. And if they can, they can, they might know, like, I could have done better. And that's what I want them to say. I don't want them to say, like, oh, I, I sucked. I'm so bad. I don't want them to feel like they're not doing well. But it takes a lot for somebody to say, I think I could have done better. And a lot of times when they say that, I'm like, okay, well, what area of what we talked about did you struggle the most with? So maybe it was posting consistently. So then we go from there and we come up with a plan that we can help them with that. So usually what I do if it's posting consistently, we kind of come up with a schedule that they can use for posting or something like that. Or if it's reaching out to people like, oh, I didn't reach out to people. I, I, just, I just didn't do it. Like, okay, well, how about every day before you go to bed, you make a list of the five people you're going to reach out to tomorrow. And then the next day, that's the first thing you do when you wake up, or that's what you do when you're on your lunch break or something like that. So instead of working on areas that don't need to be worked on, that they kind of already have, I kind of see where they're struggling and help them with that. And by them telling me, like, oh, well, I, I struggle with posting, then I know that's what I need to help them with. 
So that's usually the second call. And then after the second call, I send them another email. And this email has a, a video about our free group, like how to invite people to the free group and then a link to a template for a challenge group, which is like a 30 day template. It's just very basic, just something for them to have to kind of see like when they run their own challenge group in the future, this is kind of like how it would go and at least they have it and they don't have to like be searching for it and like, I tell them keep it, I'm not sending it to you again, like save it and cause it is in the Google Drive but I want them to kind of see how a challenge group um, format looks because I kind of talk about challenge groups on the second call as well. And then I send them off and send the email off and I kind of keep up with them. I see what they're doing all week. Like I don't check in with them every single day because I mean, I, nobody has time to do that. But if they, I tell them though, like if you have somebody who is thinking about coaching, like and they want to talk about coaching and you're not sure how to talk about it, I'll, I'm willing to set up calls. We'll do three-way chats. I can do three-way Facebook. I can do three-way video. I can even do, like, if you want to do a three-way phone call, I could do that too. Like, they're going to have to set it up because I don't know how to do that, but I'll do it. So, like, and I let them know that too. I really stress the importance of Emerald a lot. I don't know if that could be why my coach is at Emerald, but I talk about Emerald on the first call. I talk about Emerald on the second call and I talk about Emerald on the last call and I only do three. I don't do four. I do a getting started right and then two follow up calls. And on, I just actually had calls all day and all we talked about was like going Emerald and how to go Emerald and basically I do with the rundown. I say, okay, well, do you have family? Do you have friends? Like, and when you're talking to them and they're telling you who they're talking to and they're like, oh yeah, well this girl, she she wants to do it. Um, she she really likes Shakeology and like, okay, well, have you asked her if she wants to be a coach? Like, she could totally be a coach. And they're like, oh, I don't know. Like, I'm afraid to ask her. I'm like, just ask her. Like, how pissed would you be if you love Shakeology and nobody offered you the option to get it at a discount? Like, just ask her. So that is something that I've been telling them as well. Because, like, in all honesty, if I I was a discount coach and if I was drinking Shakeology and paying $132 every single month for it and nobody told me that I could get it for $97, like, I wouldn't be here. And I'd be pretty pissed <laughs> that I was paying all that extra money for it. So I always tell them that. And then I always ask them, too, I, about, like, siblings or um, boyfriends, husbands. It's super important to go Emerald quickly. Because what happens is when you go Emerald really fast, all of those people who are like, oh, she's a beach body coach, that's like, she can't be successful. Like, that's just one of those pyramid schemes, like, whatever. As soon as you hit Emerald, people are like, whoa, like, this is serious. Like, she's having success already. I mean, they don't know that all you had to do was sign up two coaches. Like, they don't have to know that. They just see, like, your face and this like gem and like all this glitter and they're like, Oh my God, like she's having success with this. Let me reach out to her. So when you're successful, people want to be with successful people. And that's what I tell my coaches too. I tell them as soon as you hit Emerald, like that's when things take off for you. People will see that you're having success. And then what happens too? you start to earn cycle bonuses. So I always mention that and people are really intrigued by that. They're like, okay, then all of your money doesn't just come from commissions. It comes from um, cycle bonus too. So when you have a team and another thing that I tell my coaches too, and I, I'll tell all of you guys this as well. When I started as a coach, my parents were not like a hundred percent on board with it at all. So ideally you want your mom, your dad, your brother, whatever to be your first coach, because what happens is, when you sign up more coaches, even if they're just a discount coach, the more coaches you sign up, if they, if you can just get their account to Emerald down the road, all of that volume, it's going to come up like a, like a vacuum. So if like you're here and then your mom is here and your husband or boyfriend is here, all the coaches you sign after them will create volume and that's going to come up to them and up to you. So if you sign up five coaches and then your mom's like, 
okay, you know what? You are pretty successful. Let me, let me try this Shakeology. Like what happened with me? My mom's like five levels down. Um, all of the volume that is being produced above my mom's account, she's never going to see it. She's, I mean, and even if I build her to Emerald, she's never going to see all of that volume. And I have a diamond coach above my mom. And that's, that stinks <laughs> for my mom's account because she's not seeing any of that because she didn't believe in me from the beginning. So I tell all my coaches that, like, I tell them, I will tell your boyfriend that he needs to get in now because, like, seriously, I know right now it might not seem like a lot and it doesn't seem like it's important, but just tell them, like, I'm not asking you to do, like, anything crazy. I'm just asking you to drink this shake, okay? I'm helping you get healthy. I'm not asking you to run a marathon. You don't have to work out if you don't want to. Just drink the damn shake and help me get to Emerald so I can start building this business. So that's kind of, I mean, I don't curse at my coaches, but I, I just tell them, like, seriously, it's not going to hurt. Just ask them. So that's kind of like, I guess that, I guess that's how it works. I just kind of keep putting it out there. I mean, I don't pressure them. The coaches who want to hit Emerald then I'm like, okay, well, you said you want to hit Emerald, so is what you're doing right now going to get you to where you want to be? And if they're not doing the things to get them to Emerald, then then it's not they're not going to get there. But if they are, and then they're still not, then we, there's some something's going on, and then we have to figure out from there. But I think that having the emails and having like a system makes it so much easier for me. Because each call, there's an email that corresponds to it. And I did share these with April. Um, so I'm sure she'll share them with you as well. But it kind of just goes over the call, and it has all the links to everything that, would, that pertains to what we talked about. So um, I don't know if I could, I could share my screen, right? I could show you, like, how I send the emails really quickly. Um, I just did a video about streak for uh, Dash to Diamond group, and I use this for my emails too, and it's really handy. Um, hold on. Okay, let me know when you can see it. You can see it, thumbs up? Okay, um, so this is for my coaches, and I have all of my coaches in these different um, little categories, and I have all my Emerald coaches in one, I have people who are like close to Diamond, I have them all in there. But what this allows me to do, if you click on here, you're allowed to make these little email things. And I think they're super handy when they don't disappear. Okay. Um, so I have all of my emails. I just click here and I do like new coach and I click on the email and it just pops up and I just change the name, put the email in and I can send it off. So it's just super simple. I have them all in here. Like so if it's after getting started right call, um, I click on this one, the email pops up, then I just paste the link of the recording right there, change the name, and I send it. So it's not like I need to go to the Google Drive, copy the thing, paste it, and it's so much easier than having to do that and like having it ready. Plus it kind of acts as a guide for me too when I'm on the on the call I can have it open and kind of see like okay well this is what we're going to cover and if we cover anything else or if anything else comes up um I add that to the bottom like with their goals and stuff like that. So it's just it's kind of cool. And you can also send out more than one email. You can do like mass email merges and you can send them to like individual people and you can have the different name on each one. So if you have like a bunch of call people you did like getting started write calls with, you can just do them all and send them all at once. So I don't know, it's it's helpful that way. And it's also good to kind of keep track of your coaches and not just like, it's good to track your customers, but it's also really good to track your coaches. And that's something that I never used to do. I'd have a list of my customers, but I never had a list of coaches. And I was like, well, why, why do I not have a list of my coaches? So I kind of, since I've been doing this, I've been able to, to recognize like, okay, I have eight in coach basics. I have seven in dash to diamond group. So when I go into that group, I need to make sure that I check in with these people. And I have two rock stars right now who are killing it. So I know I need to recognize them in my team page. So it's just really important to know, um, like know just as much about your customers 
as you do about your coaches and know like where they are with things. And it's not just like, okay, well I checked in with my, my customer and like they're doing the program and they lost eight pounds. That's awesome. But what about that coach who's like, they need a getting started right call or, or they scheduled one or they're in your dash to diamond group or they're in your coach basics group. Like, are you aware of where your coaches are? And that's so important to know, but especially when you get a bigger team, it's really important to, um, to know where everybody is so that you can, you can provide each coach with what they need depending on where they are at each um, level. So if you have a coach who's pushing for diamond, you're going to be able to provide them with specific training and specific help that they need. That's not something that you would might want to put in like your team page for everybody because it might be like too much for somebody who's just starting. You don't want to overwhelm them. You know who is diamond. So you know who you can send that training to or stuff like that. So it just helps you kind of categorize your coaches. It also helps with um, like, I have a, category called like idle coaches so I put all the coaches in there who aren't doing a damn thing so that I know I don't need to waste my time reaching out to these people and just trying to do calls with these people and I don't have to tag them in posts if they're not coaching or if they're discount coaches because I used to just tag all the coaches and then they'd be like stop tagging me I don't want to be tagged so then I know like, who not to tag so it's just it helps me that way too I'm just like an organization freak you can't tell by looking at my room because my bed's still not made. But um, when it comes to this stuff, I am pretty organized. So, I mean, I guess that's I guess that's really it with um, the onboarding and how it works. I think the emails are a big part of it. I think stressing the importance of Emerald is super important. And then just obviously letting them know, like, success club's non-negotiable. And the way to get there, like, why not get there by signing up coaches instead of, signing up people for a challenge like even if it's a coach or even if it's a challenger and they don't want to coach yet then their first month they can focus on themselves like okay you want to you want to be uh you might want to be a coach you're not sure how about we sign you up as a coach now so that you can get your discount on your shakeology but also your first month will work on yourself will work on building your confidence will work on getting you the results so that come Next month, when you have your results, you're already, you already have a before and after. You already have been in the team page. You kind of get the gist of everything just by being a fly on the wall. And then you're able to move on from there. And that's why I send the email out to everybody because if they start as a customer or like a discount coach, I mean, then down the road they want to coach, they have everything. They know when the team calls are. They know how to schedule a call. They know where to find everything. And then, like, I have a girl right now who's literally like, oh, I'm going through the emails. I'm learning everything. I'm so excited to start this now. And she signed up, like, two months ago as a discount coach. So that's, I guess, um, when you're – if you do have some type of email, I used to just send it to the coaches who wanted to work the business. And then I was like, well, why don't I just send it to everybody? I mean, they're in the team page, so they might as well get the email too. So – I guess that's another thing that kind of helps me too with um, having coaches kind of just pop out of nowhere, like, all right, I'm ready to work. And then we can build from there. They have everything. I know I didn't really just talk about making people emeralds. I kind of went all over the place, but um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. No, that was awesome. I love it so much. And I am so excited to watch your streak video tonight. Um, sounds so funny and watch your streak video. Um, <laughs> but um, I'm excited to do that. That's like exactly what I want to do because I feel like if coaches aren't posting regularly, I kind of forget about them. And I don't want to totally forget. My mindset is if you're working, you come to me. If you're posting, I'm going to reach out to you. But if you're not doing anything, if you're not posting, if you're not being active in our groups, I just kind of let them go. And I don't, and I, I try to once a month, like, oh, what do I need to, who do I need to reach out to? But at the same time, there's plenty of people that just aren't self-motivated and have the potential of being amazing coaches. And if you don't like, hey, how's it going? Is every, can I help you with anything? And the same thing with challengers. There's people that are posting their meals and doing this, but if you're, they, 
if you take the time out to ask them how they're doing, ask them why they're not posting and they're like, Oh, I've just really been struggling with this, but they were scared. I have like three girls that told me they were like scared to tell me, but they're like, I just don't know. I can't figure it out. If I make chili, how the heck do I do like measure it out? So whether it's coaches or whether it's clients, you're going to have people that they need to be coddled a little bit. And I, I am guilty of being like, Oh, you're not posting. Then you obviously don't want it. Like, and so I don't want to be like a, a brat, but I definitely do cater to those people that hit the ground running. Cause those are the gold ships that I want to work with. But in the grand scheme of things, you have to know that there's plenty of people that have the potential to be amazing coaches, but they just need either a little time or a little extra hand holding. Um, okay. So one question I had for you was I saw you had a list of all your girls in coach basics. Mm -hmm. Okay. So since I revamped my coach basics after I talked to you. And so now it is just as yours are, there's just like set days. They can go in and do it on their own time. How do you know who's actually in it though? Are you just like anybody you sign on as a coach you're putting in there or? Oh no, I should have mentioned that. Um, as I didn't forget to mention that. So I don't enroll my coaches in coach basics. I make them enroll themselves. Right. I do that too. Yeah. So, like when you see them post on day one, is that when you would turn, put them into coach basics, that pipeline? Um, or yeah, when I what happens is I send them an email and I don't let them do it until I have a getting started right call because my my theory is why show you all this stuff how to work the business if you are not willing to get on a call with me and talk to me because I don't know it just doesn't make sense to me to have somebody know or like they're going to be asking me all these questions anyway like oh well what do you mean by this and oh well how do I do this and how do I do that mm -hmm. there's no point to put that information out there into their into their minds before they get on a call with me. So that's one of the prereqs of being in there. They need to talk to me on the call first. Okay. So then in the email, there's a link to join the coach basics. So when I see that they've joined, I know they read the email. I know that they want to learn. So I accept it. And then I tag them in the welcome thing. And I say like, read the, check out the rules. I'm so excited you're here and tag me when you're ready to begin. And then they tag me. And then they, they can start like day one. So after they do day one, they tag me. Like they can keep going as long as they're tagging me because sometimes I can't catch up to them. Like they're going like they want to sit and keep going. And I'm like, all right, keep going. But I had a girl the other day. She's like, can I move on? I'm like, of course. Like just you tagged me. I just didn't have a chance to look at them yet. Yeah. So that's kind of like how I do it. And then when you put them in to this uh, the streak thing, it puts the date like automatically when you added them. So okay. you know, like, okay, well, I added, I don't know, Jessica to Coach Basics on um, September, what's today? What's October? It's October, but the 15th. So I added her to Coach Basics September 15th. It's now October 15th, and she still hasn't completed it. So maybe I should kind of see what's going on with that. Because I tell them, it's at your own pace. But I suggest you finish it within your first month mm -hmm. because in order to like, I know you're like your first month as a coach, like you really want to hit success club And the way that I have it set up. What I've been noticing is by the end of the coach basics, they're an Emerald coach or they have one coach and they're like close to Emerald. Mm -hmm. So, um, I tell them that I'm like, if you want to do it, it says 15 days. I don't expect you to do it in 15 days. Just go at your own pace, but I'm not going to be like, Hey, did you do your homework? Like, Hey, I'm not going to be your mom. When I get on the calls with them, I ask them about coach basics. I ask them like what they've learned and what's been useful. And if they have anything they want to talk about that was confusing, but I don't tell them like, Oh, well, um, I don't like message them every day. Like do your homework, do your homework. Like my mom does to my sister. Like I'm not going to do that. So it's whatever pace they want to go. But as long as it's done within their first month, then I know like, okay, they're serious. Like, and the ones who are serious, they finish it before the month is over anyway. So, okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, I, I, I could ask a million questions, but, um, does anybody else have questions? I'll let you guys go. Cause I can pick Carolyn's brain anytime. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you get that streak thing? Um, that is a, like a add on to your Gmail. So you have to be in Google Chrome to, d to do it because I tried it in the other ones and it doesn't work in any other web browser, but Google Chrome. 
but you just kind of type in um, streak for Gmail and then you download it and then it'll show up in your uh, in your Gmail on the side where you have like your folders and stuff. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And she posted the video of how to do it in the Dash to Diamond group and I also shared it in our team group. Okay, I thought I saw that. I don't have a Gmail account though, so that oh, might be a free. problem. Just create it. It's free. Okay. Yeah, and you can. It's, it's definitely worth it mm -hmm. to have one because when you open a second business center, you need a new email anyway, so you'll have a new email. Oh, perfect. Because <laughs> you're gonna open one, right? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm just planning ahead. Yeah. <laughs> um. Does it? Um, Samantha says, I'm rocking a baby, but listening, how long should we form? I always feel like it needs to last days, but I don't think that's right. Um, I typically, I have, I use my streak for this too. Like if I'm talking to somebody and the conversation just flows really well, then I'm not going to wait so long to invite them to a free group or invite them to coaching. If I think like a lot of the people who I'm talking to now, are people I find on Instagram and I find them because I want them on my team. So like, obviously I, I want them to be a coach and I, like I, I've kind of gotten into the habit. I don't know if this is a bad problem to have, but I haven't like last month I signed zero challengers. I just signed all coaches and I don't know if that's a good problem to have, but I've just been noticing like the people I'm talking to about a challenge are people who I would see being a coach on my team. And it's not that I don't want to help other people. Mm -hmm. So if the conversation is just flowing and um, it's like the first time you reached out to them, then you kind of just have to see, like you kind of have to look at it from their perspective. Like if this girl were to ask me, would it be weird right now? Like, is it too early to ask them? And then Sometimes you can, what I do, I invite them to the free group if I feel like I'm not quite sure about this person yet. I'm, I don't know if they would be a good fit for my team. So I'm going to add them to the free group and kind of see what they're doing in there and keep in contact. Mm -hmm. And then they go down to like my form stage two, where that's where I'm getting closer. And then I would invite them to um, coaching or whatever. But typically I wouldn't wait too long if you really have a good, uh, good vibe with somebody because I've, found um this has happened to me several times like i waited too long and then you ask them and then somebody already asked them mm -hmm. so you don't want to wait too long but you don't you don't want to be like hey this is the first time we're talking do you ever think about coaching like <laughs> the first thing that comes out of your mouth you don't want that obviously so as long as soon as you have enough of a knowledge about the person like i was on a call last night with trey bearer from um He's a three-star diamond coach. He's hilarious. And if you don't know who he is, you got to find his videos. He's like so funny. But he was saying that when you're forming, you really want to be listening. So if you're listening to somebody and they're telling you like, oh, I'm super busy with my job and I, I have like kids at home and I like really would want to stay home, you can just keep taking it and keep asking questions until you have enough that you can be like, well, this is perfect for you. Like, this will help you do this, this, and this. Like, this will help you stay home. This will help you quit your job if you hate it. They're like, I'd feel so bad if I didn't tell you this. So you want to, like, listen really well. And if you think you have enough that you can kind of, like, throw it back at them and be like, dude, I have the perfect opportunity for you to do X, Y, and Z, then it's the right time. So it's really different. It depends who you're talking to, I guess. Right. And that's so important. Like we have the scripts for a reason, but not to go copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. And honestly, the scripts, in my opinion, don't go enough into talking about personal stuff. I say, use it as a template. But when I say, what's your biggest struggle? Is it the fitness side or the nutrition side? And they say, oh, definitely fitness. I'm just so busy with the kids. I'm not going to be like, oh, okay, great. I totally understand how you feel. So what's your biggest goal? Or, you know, um, you know, going on to the next thing in the script, you need to then say, oh my gosh, yeah, I can imagine. How old are your kids? Blah, blah, blah. What do you do? And go in there and definitely talk about um, that stuff.
um, mm -hmm. because the more that you get to know people, it's kind of like if somebody just comes at you with that random, that random Mary Kay consultant sends you a message on Facebook and says, Hey April, how are you? I just started as a Mary Kay. Here's my website. If you want anything, let me know your address. I can send you a catalog. And you're like, Holy shit. No, like, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and so that's, so it's not that bad because you formed a little bit, but the more you can form and build a relationship, the more they're going to trust you and want to do something with you. Um, so yeah, I feel like sometimes people take the script so literally and that's just a template as more you can get as personal as you want to, but that's a great tip. Just keep listening. Yeah. And I wanted to add something too. I was watching a video. I forget who it was. I think it was Katie. Who was it? Kiefer. I don't know how to say her last name. Hefner. Hefner, yeah. Mm -hmm. And she was saying how when she talks to people, she kind of just thinks like, okay, if this were a conversation with my best friend, like how would it look? Mm -hmm. So when you talk to your best friend, you're, you're talking about one thing, then you're talking about like, oh, my dog. And then you're talking about like, oh, I don't know. I went out to eat with my boyfriend last night. And like, you're getting off topic. So what she does is she gets off topic on purpose so that when she brings it back around, it's not as like, it's like, oh, I like, sorry, I know, like, we were totally talking about my challenge group, like, not my dog. So, like, she kind of does that on purpose and then brings it full circle around, like, oh, yeah, I know that's, I forgot that's what we were talking about. Like, I know you liked my post, so um, was that, were you interested in that? So, it's not completely like, hey, you liked my post, sign up, like, be on my team, buy my Shakeology. Like, it's not, like, yeah. scripted, so... I think I thought that was pretty cool like when she said that on purpose to get off track on purpose which I mean I don't have to try it kind of just happens but <laughs> for people you could just make it happen on purpose <laughs> exactly mm -hmm. awesome does anybody else have any questions at all on um, getting coaches started getting to Emerald um, Amanda, I know that you, okay, so let me give you some background on Amanda, Carolyn. She has been awesome. She's a new coach, what, about two weeks, maybe? A week or two? Go ahead and unmute yourself. Three. Three. Okay, so this girl is awesome. She does post. She made, I made, gave him a challenge, I think, two weeks ago to make a video, um, and she- oh, I watched that. Yeah, she made a really real video. Um, you know, anything you tell this girl to do, she does, and so- um, she's getting a little, a little frustrated because the girl is seriously like killing it with coach basics, everything. So, but she's not really seeing sales. So obviously if you're doing everything somebody tells you to do, and then you're like, what the heck? Um, so I want you to use, I want you to pick Carolyn's brain. So what do you think is the thing that you struggle with right now? The most Amanda? Um, talking to people about coaching. I'm just, I don't know. I'm not. I was a shy person, so I still am. So it bugs me to just kind of, you know, go out and talk, you know. I'm the not. original message or, like, forming or, like, getting to coaching? What part about it? Um, I guess getting to the coaching. I, I'm good at talking to them, but I, I'm, I guess I'm worried about asking them, I guess. I don't want to sound salesy, you know, and stuff like that. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I had a girl I was talking to on my team about this today too, like the same thing. She was afraid she was going to come off like a salesperson. And I basically told her, um, like the more you think about how you don't want to be a salesperson, the more you're going to sound like a salesperson. Like you don't want to go into it that way. And you also don't want to go into it thinking like, oh, well, they're not going to sign up or, oh, they're going to think I'm this. And, oh, they're going to – because when you think that, that comes out in what you – type and I, I don't know if you like you're not going to notice it but when somebody reads that they're going to pick up on it and it's crazy how it happens like you pick up on that vibe like well they don't think I'm going to sign up so I'm just not going to do it or like they don't believe in me so I'm not going to do it so if you go into it like all right this person's going to sign up they're going to be an awesome coach I'm going to help them get started they're going to be like a diamond coach on my team and it's like you go in there with that positive attitude then you're the chances of them signing up are or better than if you go into it thinking like, oh, they're, they're going to think I'm a salesperson. Um, there's one more thing that I had in my head and it just totally drifted away. Um, hold on. What did you were saying that you struggled with? Oh, okay. I remember. 
you didn't want to sound like you're being scripty and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, I have something that I use with everybody. And it so it technically is a script. But the thing about it is it doesn't sound like a script because it's like me how I would talk. So you want to make your, um, if you want to have, if you have a message, like, so say I, this basically happened because I sent this to somebody and it just worked. And I'm like, wow, like, that's so cool. I just was being myself, you know? So then I turned it into my script. So I send it to everybody and I basically tell them like, um, like I would be so butthurt if somebody asked you before I did. So have you ever considered doing what I do as a coach? I mean, I know there's more before that. I, I'll just read it to you because I don't read it anymore. I just copy and paste it. But um, I call it my butthurt script and I share it with all my coaches. So it's like, will you copy it into the chat and then I'll post it in our group? Yeah. I'm, got it right here. Okay, cool. I mean, the middle part, I do change. So depending on the person, um, I do change it. But the general, oh, I think I pasted it twice. All right, the general um, gist of everything, I'm basically myself. I'm like, I see what you're doing. I see how passionate you are. Like, for, you're so, um, like, if they have kids, I say, I see that you're wanting to be a role model for your kids. Like, you're such a fit mom. I see you posting photos with your kids working out and just compliment them and then I just tell them like all right so this is really awkward for me but like I'd feel totally butthurt if somebody else asked you before I did and I've been putting it off for a while so and then I just ask them and the more I've done that and the more I got over that fear of like asking people to coach that's when I started like signing coaches left and right like these people I don't know I guess they just like when I said butthurt maybe they thought it was funny I don't know but <laughs> it worked so you just kind of have to find something that works for you. Like when you find that kind of thing that you ask somebody if they ever considered coaching and it works, copy it and save it somewhere so that you can kind of use that same format when you ask the next person and just kind of switch things around to make it to them. Like if they don't have kids, obviously don't say, Oh, you're, you're such a role model for your kids and you're a fit mom. Like they'd be like, wait a minute, I don't have kids. So do you want to, I mean, I've almost done that before, so you got to be careful, <laughs> but, but yeah, just find something that works. And when you find something that works, just keep doing it. And then when that doesn't work, then you find something else and then you keep doing that. So if you keep doing the same thing and it's not working, then, then that's kind of silly. But if it is working, then you just want to keep doing it. So, okay. I would say just get over the fear. Like there's nothing really to be afraid of. The worst thing that could happen is I say no, and then you move on. And find somebody else. And then they'll come back in a couple weeks, a couple months, or a couple years. I still, to this day, have people that are coming back years later. And they're like, I don't know why I didn't do it when you first asked me, but I'm ready now. I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm not going to tell you how much volume you missed out on, but okay. You know? Know? <laughs> <laughs> I have a coach, actually. She was my first coach I ever signed, and she quit. And now she's a coach again. <laughs> I just so told, uh, posted that in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> I have a coach yeah. that did that, too. It's like, what? I'm like, uh, okay, you're back. You're All back right. for uh, another another chance. And she's doing really well now. So you never know. Like, it might have not just been her time. Yeah. So, yeah, just the worst that could happen is they say no. Exactly. Does anybody else have any questions? Anything you're struggling with? And thank you for, I, sorry, I put you on the spot, Amanda, but I hope that helped. Yeah. <laughs> um, Okay, I'm gonna, if you guys don't have a question, I'm, Michelle, you don't have anything? You're good? Okay, okay. <laughs> Let me go through this really quick because this was something that we talked, that Carolyn covered. Um, okay, so this girl, oh wait, I didn't share my screen. <laughs> that would be helpful. Um, one sec. So this is somebody I signed on as a coach today and I was literally straight talking to her about a challenge pack because she had added me from Instagram, from a recent um, uh, challenge uh, challenge group post. So I go through the script and, um, you know, we talk a little bit, but, you know, um, she, she, this is one thing that I'm really good at. I'm really good at um, just telling you like it is. So she said, the nutrition is hard on my days off with my boyfriend because he doesn't eat healthy at all. But during the week, I'm on point, da, 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 da. 
he likes pizza and mac and cheese. And then I said, my hubby eats like total garbage. So trust me, I know all about that, but it doesn't matter. He does not force feed you. You decide what you put in your body. You cannot blame anyone else for that. So we're going to get serious together because I have been way off track. So when you come across as very real too, um, I said, I'm totally sporting a food baby right now. Um, and I said, I think you'd love this. And honestly, you won't even need your gym. She was talking about her gym. And then I said, you just, I just need you to commit to this for 30 minutes a day for three weeks. Can you do that? And she's like, you know, she's basically like thanking me for my tough love. And then she says, I'm willing and ready. Where do I sign? And I didn't even tell her really about what it was yet. And so then I go, um, I'm so darn excited for, you know, to do it together. And then this is part of the three, the, you know, 21 day fix script. And then she's, you know, going through and talking about this. I'm interested in to see the containers. And then this again, I said, we all need to hear it. Um, let's do this together. And then this is the 21 day fix script. And then I said, and if you want, you can even sign on as a coach and work on you. And I can teach you how to encourage other people and make money like I do, because I think you'd be amazing at it. It's the same price either way. If you're interested in being a coach, it's kind of just added motivation. You can't tell someone to work out and then sit around and eat Oreos on the couch, you know, LOL. And then she's like, that sounds really reasonable. What happens after 30 days? And I said, well, we'll probably be BFFs by then. <laughs> and then we're always running groups um, so you can continue. And I said, if you sign on to be a coach, the next group, you'll be doing what I'm doing, doing it while having friends and clients doing it right along with you. So I'm literally telling her like, well, the conversation we're having now, that's what you're going to be doing later. And then she said the idea, and I took a screenshot of this and posted it in our group too. The idea of being a coach makes me really nervous, but this is one of the best parts I wanted to tell you about. I said, well, don't be. My sister signed on as a coach just for a discount on the product. She ended up losing 95 pounds and being able to quit her job because of this business. She didn't think she was even going to work it. Doesn't she look amazing? And then she saw that and she was like, dang, she should be so proud. Okay. And then she basically, you know, was talking about signing up as a coach. And then we went in, well, I'm all in girl. So, um, and then she, for some reason she thought I lived in Texas and I told her she was a crazy pants, but so she signed up tonight, um, as a coach. And I thought that was just so cool because, um, it was just kind of like, she was ready to sell the challenge pack. And I was like, and I usually go in with coaching, but today I've just been kind of like talking to people, like kind of just going through the motion. I was like, oh wait, I, why am I not talking to her about coaching? So even if you start talking to people about a challenge group, you can go through and do that. And it's like, dude, the same price, why would you not do it? And kind of the same thing Carolyn said is like, they can do it focusing on them the first month and then start doing that. Um, but you know, um, I wish I could chat with people like that. I have, I have all of these screenshots lately that I've been talking to people and I just put it in our, our group chat. So go ahead and, and go look through that. But honestly, I think the less you think about what you're going to say, the better it comes off. How would you talk to your best friend if she was saying stuff? Like, just be yourself. Don't worry about coming across professional. Just be you. Like, I literally am talking about like crazy things and I'm silly and stupid. And I think that's what helps the most is because you're you. And so I would say, take your filter off. Stop trying to sound like you're a freaking professional. If you needed any type of certification, they would, each body would require it, but they don't like, they don't care if you have a high school degree, they don't care at all. <laughs> so, um, I would just try to be yourself and talk to people. And I'm always trying to put those scripts into our group to help you. Um, but feel free to take screenshots and post in our group and we're all, we're all here to help you. But I think overthinking is like the worst thing you can do. Just type whatever comes to your head. So, all right. Well, thanks so much, Carolyn. Sorry, I went on a little tangent there at the end. I wanted to make sure after you said that and it made me think of that because it's just kind of funny. You don't even have to lead with coaching and sometimes it goes back to that. So um, I love, love, loved your information and I'm sorry, Coach Relations called me back. So I'm going to have to go through the recording and listen to the spot in the middle that I missed. Um, <laughs> So thank you so much. And thank you guys so much for hopping on. I'll post this um, recording later. Let me make sure I didn't miss anything in the chat. Okay, we're good. All right. So um, we only have like three people at Success Club right now from our team. So we are going to rock that out. And I would like to see a show of hands who will be Success Club by next Thursday. Mm -hmm. Michelle, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you guys. Have a great night. Thanks, Carolyn, so much for joining. Thanks for having me, April. All right, bye. Bye, guys.